Recording in progress. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of God, peace be upon you and welcome to uh, the Center for Islam and Global Affairs, SIGA and in seminar number 60. Today is a difficult uh, day because uh, there has been an uh, attack that has been going on for over 24 hours in Palestine we hope oh, our hearts and our prayers are with our uh, people in Palestine and in Gaza. I would like to welcome uh, all of the people who are joining us here in the room and those who are joining us online in this uh, evening in which we are going to discuss the, uh, the, uh, the issue of the hour, which is the elections that will be held next Sunday. Our speaker today will be Dr. Murad Ali. Uh, Dr. Murad has a long experience as a consultant and as a manager of the uh, electoral campaigns in his uh, original country, Egypt, where he was uh, in charge or an official in the elections of 2012 when, when there was uh, elections for the Shura Council and the People's Assembly, as well as the presidential elections. Dr. Murad has an experience that goes uh, uh, that are more that goes uh, uh, more than three uh, decades uh, in strategic planning, and uh, he is a, a CEO of one of the consultancy uh, companies in Turkey, and he is a strategic consultant with uh, Al Jazeera Network for Media. And he is a strategic consultant uh, with a number of uh, international uh, companies. He was also the uh, a regional manager in the Middle East for uh, one of the multinational uh, corporations, which was headquartered, uh, which had its uh, office in uh, uh, in Egypt. He got the master's degree in business administration from France and the PhD from the Netherlands, and he has a, a number of diplomas in uh, these issues that he talks about, uh, whether the uh, e-marketing or communications and business administ administration, as well as uh, a number of uh, programs uh, in uh, well-renowned uh, or, uh, universities like uh, University of Columbia or Harvard or other uh, uh, universities. So welcome, um, Dr. Mora. Today he is going to talk about the electoral campaigns, uh, to, uh, talking about Turkey as an, a model. Uh, he will have time to speak to us about this issue and then we will have a Q&A or to receive your comments or your uh, remarks. Of course, the situation or the uh, conference will be in Arabic, uh, although he uh, uh, he uh, he, he speaks well uh, French and English, but uh, because we have a lot of listeners uh, who are tuning in, in uh, uh, Arabic. And I would like to thank uh, Omar Kahoji, who is uh, interpreting right now the, uh, to the English channel, mm -hmm. although he has uh, uh, other things to do uh, for our listening. So I would like to thank him and I would like to thank you for uh, attending with us. Now, Dr. Murad will start. Please, the floor is yours. In the name of God, the most merciful and the most uh, bountiful. Uh, I, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Uh, Samuel Arian for this presentation, and I am glad to be with you here. Uh, and of course, 
uh, as I said, uh, we want to, uh, we, our prayers also uh, is with our people in Palestine. As he said, uh, these days are very difficult to days. And we hope that all the best will uh, be uh, the, the presented to them as uh, selected by God. And uh, for the people here in Turkey, for this a vital Muslim country uh, in the coming elections, and we hope that this country will continue to be a pioneering country in the Muslim world and in the Middle East. Today, we are going to talk uh, uh, on different uh, things. We will talk about the electoral campaigns as an idea. And uh, we will have examples as we are speaking. Uh, and then we will talk about what happens uh, in Turkey. And then hopefully we will, uh, I will finish uh, I will finish with the, your questions and your remarks at the end. So I will start now in the beginning about the roads map for uh, a successful electoral campaign, how we can organize a successful electoral campaign. So uh, these are the contents of my presentation today. And uh, I hope that we, uh, I think I'm not going to speak more than half an hour and then we will have the Q&A session. Uh, uh, so the first question is, what is an electoral campaign? In uh, so many Arab countries, a lot of people don't understand what is the meaning of electoral campaign and there is confusion about this term, which is the campaigning or the elections campaigning. There is misinterpretation of the uh, elect elections campaigning. So when we talk with the people in Qatar or in Egypt and even Egypt that has uh, a long experience in elections in different uh, institutions, uh, people confuse the electoral campaign and the uh, the propaganda or the uh, the marketing. Some people believe that the campaigning or the elections campaigning is just a number of uh, 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 advertisements that we do. Some people, for example, think that those advertisements uh, are the uh, is the election campaign. So when we have, for example, uh, parliament member or uh, they are going uh, uh, running for an, for an office in the syndicate, so they clips. Uh, I want somebody to run my campaign on uh, Facebook or on so, and they think that this is the the campaign or the elections campaigns. Actually, these are tools, but uh, not the elections campaigning itself. So the campaign is not the advertisement itself. Advertisements is only part of the uh, elections campaign, but not the campaign itself. Some people believe that uh, the elections campaign is the promotion the candidate, whether it is a president or a parliament member or to a syndicate. So they think that in the campaign, I am promoting this uh, member or this uh, candidate uh, so they can be uh, voted for. Some other people believe that this is a reputation, reputation building. For example, uh, the uh, reputation of Kalajdar Oglo or uh, President Erdogan or anybody, one, uh, anybody else, so that this reputation should be a good reputation, as it is called. And some people believe that the campaigning, uh, the, the electoral campaign is none of the above, the above. So it's not, or actually, in, in re reality, the campaign is not the advertisement, nor building the reputation or the promotion. Uh, so these are only parts and tools of the campaign. Uh, now, what is the elections uh, campaigning or the electoral campaign? To understand it well, the main goal of the campaign, of course, according to the uh, elections uh, uh, law that we have. Let's uh, talk about the one in Turkey. So the main uh, goal is that next uh, Sunday, the candidate will have 50% plus one or to get to the highest uh, percentage of the votes. So sometimes uh, uh, this is what, uh, in some countries, they get to the highest vote, even if they don't get to the absolute uh, majority. In Turkey, they should get 50% plus one. So the main goal of the campaign is, is not building reputation or promotion or advertisement. All of these are tools. The main goal is that on the day of election, after the ballot boxes are closed and when the votes are counted, I want to get 50% plus one 
or the highest uh, count of votes. So this is the main goal that I have. In order to achieve that, I have a number of components that should be present in the campaign. I could, I could have a structure, funding, uh, relations, uh, ideas, and I'm going to talk about all of that. However, it's very important uh, to have a clear main goal in this, or the main goal to be clear in my mind. Uh, some people get into or run into the elections not to uh, uh, to win the elections. For example, Muharram Inja or uh, uh, Uz, uh, Uzun, because in the in Turkish elections, we have four uh, uh, candidates. We have two with high uh, uh, chances or to win. We have Kalaj Aroglu and Erdogan. Both of them are getting into the elections and they already know that uh, to, uh, or sorry, the other two, Muharram Inja and Uzan, uh, they know that they will not get into a second round if there is a second round. So why uh, they are getting into this election? Just like uh, Akshinar uh, gets into the elections of 2018 and uh, Demirtas went into the 2014 elections. What they do is because they want to get some soft power, they want to promote themselves for other goals, or, or they want to get into the next elections. So this is not called... a. Uh, a genuine electoral campaign, it could be building reputation or marketing or promotion of the person, but not the, a campaign for those people. Now, uh, to understand the electoral campaign well, I need to understand the uh, motives uh, for people to vote for a certain candidate. Why people will vote for Erdogan or Kamal uh, Daroglu or Muharram Inja or in the parliament, why are they are going to vote for a certain person? There is a number of uh, 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 motives that allow people to vote. First of all, uh, the uh, uh, loyalty and affiliation. So they have, for example, something in common and they have loyalty for that person. They might be from the same tribe. So if they are, for example, if I'm a Kurdish person, I am voting for a Kurdish. If I am Alawite, so I am voting for an Alawite candidate. If I don't like Alawites, I'm not going to vote for any Alawite. Or maybe it's because of the geography. So if I'm from the same city, I'm voting for that person. Sometimes uh, because it, uh, because of this institution. So if we are uh, from the same university, sometimes uh, the ethnicity or the uh, gender, as we talked about the Kurds or others. However, there are motives sometimes that are present, uh, which allow which make people uh, select somebody based on that, uh, which is loyalty and. Uh, affiliation. The second aspect is ideology and creed. And this is very important in Turkey. As you know, in Turkey, there is uh, polarization in ideology. We have secular people who might be extreme in their uh, secular secularism, and there are others who are uh, conservatives, and they might be uh, very strict in their conservatism, and we have others. Uh, so this creed could be the faith or the denomination or the party. I might be leftist or nationalist or uh, conservative, or maybe I have a certain uh, uh, thing, uh, I, a main thought. So secularism is a social trend more than being a, uh, an ideology of uh, a certain party. For example, I believe that Islam should be the core or uh, the, the center of the life of the individual and the woman should be scarred and I don't want ideas like homosexuality be present or any sexual uh, relationship outside the marital relation should be there. And the secular maybe have a secular person have uh, other ideas. For example, they believe in uh, sexual uh, freedom, etc., etc. So the ideology and the creed are one of the aspects uh, that allow, that make people or push people to select a certain uh, a certain uh, uh, candidate or leftist or rightist in economy, for example. I have a third aspect, which is the characteristics of uh, the uh, uh, the person running or the candidates. So, what are the characteristics of the candidates? First of all, uh, uh, starting with their qualification, their specialty. For example, they have PhD, they have achievements. His charisma, for example, sometimes I would have somebody or a candidate, for example, Erdogan has a certain charisma. He is charismatic. He is uh, tall. He speaks very well. He is very uh, uh, eloquent. Kalic Daroglu, for example, is different. So he is short. He doesn't have, uh, he's not very charismatic. That's why they do something 
uh, in his uh, campaign and those, for example, who are supporting him in the West, they are introducing him as the simple person. He is the Gandhi of Turkey. So they are overcoming the weakness of his charisma. They are trying to um, turn it into a, a strength and they are trying to uh, link him to Gandhi of India and they are calling him Gandhi of Turkey. So the characteristics of the uh, candidate and his expertise. One of the uh, things that Erdogan is relying on in his elections uh, is saying that uh, uh, he's talking about the achievements that he made. He's talking about the change that he made in Istanbul. One of the problems, I was talking with one of the politicians here, and he was telling me that the areas or the regions of the Kurds and the uh, earthquake air regions, they think that they are going to uh, vote for a, uh, the opposition party, but they will vote for Erdogan because they believe that this is the person who has the solution for their problems, because they believe that the other uh, uh, nominee or the other candidate doesn't have the expertise that uh, allow him to uh, solve their problems, for example. We have another factor or another aspect, uh, a fourth factor, actually, which is issues and interests. What do we mean by that? This person, for example, I might uh, vote for a certain uh, candidate because I know that he's going to, uh, 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 I will be in favor of a certain issue or for a certain interest. So uh, somebody in the parliament, I know, for example, this person or this candidate is going to uh, rid us of problems in certain municipality. He is going to do a certain reform here or there. Even uh, And this uh, uh, applies to the presidential candidates as well. Uh, for example, in uh, the elections in Egypt, the elections that were against Dr. Morsi, may he rest in peace, they were uh, uh, issuing rumors that he's going to apply the Islamic Sharia and women will not have the custody for their uh, children and he's going to change that. So one of, uh, so one of the groups of the people, uh, for example, the uh, divorced uh, people will be afraid that if this person came to office, my interest will be affected and the vice versa. So sometimes uh, uh, supporting a certain candidate because you are supporting a certain interest or a certain issue. For example, in the past weeks, Kelic Daroglu said that I'm going to pay the uh, civil servants uh, the least uh, uh, salary I'm going to pay is will be 21,500 Turkish lira. Yesterday, uh, President Erdogan said that the uh, minimum wage will be 15,000 Turkish lira. It's not a promise, it is actual, and it's going to be implemented by the in the beginning of the uh, of, of July. So people have interests. So if you have a certain interest, I will uh, follow up or I'm going to support a certain candidate because uh, I support this uh, uh, interest or this issue. There are others who are linked, for example, with the uh, HDP or Mihipe or with Abdullah Ujalan or others, for example. So they are going to say that uh, there is an agreement. Once Kelish Dar uh, uh, wins, he is going to release the detainees of uh, this group. He is going to solve their problems, etc. Now, right now, it's not well known what are the issues that they are in agreement on. But here now we have this group that is attached to this candidate because they are attached to a certain issue. Or, for example, there is distribution or division of interests, as we see in the six member state. So they are going to uh, share the responsibility. So here we have linkage uh, or links in uh, interests and issues. Finally, and not the least, we have the relations of the candidate and his ability to uh, fulfill the promises based on the relations that uh, they have. In the parliament, sometimes we we see that the candidates are from uh, families, well-known families, and they have relations in authority, and they can achieve that. Some of the opposition uh, cannot win in certain areas, uh, because if they win, they will not be able to uh, uh, to solve the problems of that area, whereas those who are linked to the authority, they are more capable of solving those problems. For example, Kemal Kalecidaroglu is trying to promote himself or to market himself to the Turkish society that I have relations with the West and I'm going to get you 300 million US dollars. That's why yesterday, for example, he was on an interview on the TV 
when he was uh, with the economist in London and in another interview, he has meetings with the embassies, for example, the, uh, the ambassador of the European Union, the ambassador of the United States. And so he's telling the, the, the voters uh, that I have good relations with the West. I'm going to get your money from the European Union. I'm going to kick the Syrians out of Turkey. I'm going to uh, make the Europeans pay for the price of that, etc. So he is not linked with the authority, but he is um, showing himself or promoting himself that he is linked with the Western uh, interests. And he is saying that according, uh, based on my relations, I'm going to solve the problems that we are say, uh, doing. Uh, Erdogan is doing the same thing, but in, on a different way. So, for example, you can see that the president of, of, of Albania supported him. The president of Azerbaijan uh, supported him. The prime minister of Libya, Putin, for example, attended with him uh, the inauguration of the nuclear uh, reactor, reactor. And he talked about him positively. So each one is uh, trying to leave an impression with this voter that I have relations and I'm able to fulfill my promises. Here also, President Erdogan has an edge, a competitive edge that he has been 20 years in the power. So he has genuine stories to tell the voter that we have achieved this and uh, that and that. That's why the, his campaign is focusing on this. Whereas we see that Kemal Kalajdaroglu lacks this. On the contrary, we can see that, so for example, uh, the campaign of the AK party is focusing on certain issues. Erdogan, in uh, so many of his uh, speeches, is focusing on uh, the fact uh, that, or uh, shedding light on uh, some of the failures in uh, the municipalities that are run by the opposition. So, I mean, I must understand the motives of my voter. It is a complicated thing. What do I mean? For example, I am as a voter, if I'm going to say that I'm going to select Erdogan versus Kelic Darovo, I'm going to select this member from this party or from that party. I have these five factors in my head. Now, the proportional weight is different in the mind of the voter. One voter will say, regardless of anything, if I'm going to, I'm going to vote only for a Muslim, and another one, I'm going to vote for a secular person, no matter where he is coming from, I want that person, regardless, even if he's going to destroy the country. So the proportional weight is different in the minds of each individual. And we as individuals, we take, we make these decisions in our unconscious or our subconscious. And that's the game. So you build convictions amongst people gradually. And here is the mastery in the uh, uh, elections campaign how you are going to understand the motives of the people so you can influence them these five i must work on these five factors and i need to understand the proportional weight uh, at some uh, groups for example with uh, some uh, kurds maybe loyalty and affiliation might be i might overcome everything else maybe some with some groups uh, the issues and interests are have more weight than others maybe other groups will have the uh, uh, the uh, uh, any other aspect so when i uh, work i should uh, cover these five aspects so how are the campaigns run <laughs> we're, we're, I'm, I'm concluding here, hopefully. No, I'm sorry. I've just, I just need some water, if I may. So to manage electoral campaigns, we need four stages for each uh, electoral campaign. Let me discuss these. Okay. For those who were late, in terms of how people select or voters select their candidates, there are five criteria. Maybe there are some relative weight for each 
of those factors. One is related to belonging and affiliation, the clan, the tribe, geography. There is also ideology and belief, so religion, sectarian, partisan, ideological affiliation, in addition to the characteristics of the uh, candidate. Hillary Clinton's, uh, one, or one of the Hillary Clinton's problems was charisma, which is that uh, she was, uh, for example, uh, short and petite, uh, while uh, Donald Trump was uh, uh, rather uh, grand. So, uh, I can't hear Dr. Sami. And there are also the fourth characteristic or the criteria would be causes and interests, which are the interests of a voter. When uh, there are interests that I have with a specific candidate in relation to certain uh, interests that they would serve or positions they have from certain uh, 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 issues, such as, for example, uh, some Kurdish uh, interests that are served by uh, Khalid are also uh, Olo, sorry, and all the final criteria would be the candidates' relationships, whether their relationship with authorities, uh, existing authorities, or uh, also international uh, relations exploration. And we're going to go into details with each of those stages, but let us give an overview. So the first stage is assessment and exploration, where we start to understand the laws, the regulations, the constituencies, the characteristics of voters, their needs, the uh, potential rivals, and also assess my own uh, success uh, opportunities and capacities. After that exploration, I uh, go into the, the second stage where I devise the strategy and the program uh, where I decide on my focus. So President Erdogan has decided to focus on their uh, previous success and to say that they will continue to succeed and they will focus on achievements and also uh, talk to the conservative affiliation while candidate Char Olo will focus on the economic crisis and enough with 20 uh, years of uh, of, uh, of uh, Act Party in power and also to introduce this as a six uh, party uh, table uh, and also so in this uh, stage I also develop the identity the brand uh, the logo if you like of uh, the uh, at the trademark of the uh, candidate in addition to preparing the budget and uh, finance or sources of funding because those uh, ma those plans may be nice on paper but I have to ensure that I am able to translate them into something tangible. The third stage is operations so which in which uh, I start to translate this pa pa plan into social media campaigns, uh, uh, introduce some content, uh, work on rallies, uh, on on also making connections and networking. And so here I develop my structure of operation. But there is. A, stray, a stage that is quite strange and on which I insist and I consider as a self-standing stage, although it is, it might not be so, which is the management of the day of elections. Actually, the, on this day, you might your performance might decide whether you get fifty to fifty percent or between forty-seven. Uh, percent to 52 percent for example the day of elections the, uh, you can make a big difference in certain details and this is one of the mistakes uh, that some of the electoral campaigns uh, had fallen uh, into where the where they uh, feel uh, reassured that they are going to win or that I don't know how they were going to translate this uh, slang uh, term for being reassured but feeling safe 
So they would just feel reassured and they would take a day off on the day of elections. But it is exactly because of the uh, rivalry and the competition this time and lack of confidence uh, and uh, that voters this time in particular are uh, very keen on participating in these elections because they are not sure of the winning of their uh, candidate. Also, uh, the uh, validation of uh, votes or, or devalidation of certain votes on the same day might uh, make uh, all the difference. Unfortunately, in our countries, in the Arab world, we have seen how the forgery of or, or rigged uh, elections are run. So we need to, in actual elections and in the transparent elections, we need anti-rigging uh, procedure and uh, certain uh, procedures to counter attempts uh, of rigging because if you don't have a representative from your side you might have invalid votes that are actually considered valid without any auditing or monitor monitoring uh, so those are the four stages evaluation and exploration devising the strategy operation and the day of elections in terms of the evaluation ex exploration it is the most important stage look at this a uh, video I got from the social media. He has drowned. He has made no assessment or exploration of this step. You might fall into the, this pool of mud. And unfortunately, very many people and many campaigns underestimate the importance of assessment and exploration. What do I do in assessment and exploration? I need to study and consider the external and internal environment of elections. What I mean by internal, it's myself, my party, my capacities, my finance. In addition to the external uh, environment, including the laws and regulations of elections, which are different from country to country and from context to context, and which change. So you need to study uh, those and also to the uh, you need to study the specifications and interests of your own constituency and your voters and their interests in addition and this is what i have put in red which is objective assessment of the candidate and unfortunately we suffer a lot from uh, underestimating the importance of this uh, point which what happens is that this uh, some consultant consultants insist on a certain uh, candidate what they do is that they insist on this candidate and uh, they would stay and they put the and and depict those people in a different light than he is himself. So it, this uh, happened actually with the candidate for Olo. They uh, and it's quite smart. They know uh, that he's not very charismatic. He's a bit short. He's bold. And maybe there's nothing wrong with being bold. But they did not focus on his charismatic character because he's not, and he is not. He does not have a very strong uh, resume, so to speak. So how our biography? So how did they uh, focus or uh, rectify this or overcome this? I can recall an important case. The um, manager of the electoral campaign of president, late President Mursi, we studied the resume, his resume and his biography in details because when we devise a strategy, we need to uh, focus on the strengths, but also we need to know the weaknesses uh, 
uh, but you know, use a way to go around them. This is kind of a deception, so to speak. So they introduced uh, uh, Kelly Ducharolo as uh, the Gandhi of Turkey, and it's quite smart, actually. Uh, in uh, uh, our case, we also did some psychometric analysis and we uh, assess uh, the candidate in psychometric terms. And I tell them very clearly, you need to tell me all of your history, even if you have set candles, if you have divorced your wife, you have a problem with your mother-in-law, you have a case or a lawsuit against you somewhere because I cannot deal with any surprises during the electoral campaign. I need to, use, to know these things up front. So this objective assessment is extremely important. Our uh, brothers who were running uh, the, or managing the electoral campaign of CC in the first uh, run, they introduced him as a charismatic person. Uh, everybody was talking about him about as a charismatic uh, figure. Um, and regardless of my personal stance from CC, I'm talking about uh, this as a business. They know they want to please the client, so to speak, and they know the client wants a charismatic figure. So they told the people that he is a charismatic pe person. But in reality, as soon as he appeared in the dialogue or the... Uh, the it, uh, uh, or in photographs, he really was far from charismatic. And uh, when he talked, he almost uh, looked away from the audience. He cannot even speak to the public. Another uh, person who's the president of uh, the UAE is also uh, someone who was not a uh, public figure, uh, so to speak. So the people who were introducing him, uh, his personal brand did not focus on him being an outstanding person or a charismatic person because that does not really resonate with people when they don't have a public a person with publicity. Uh, so it is important to focus on the actual strengths based on an objective assessment. And otherwise, you would... Uh, fall short from uh, doing right. Uh, when we worked with candidates, I recall that one of the ministers we worked uh, with, uh, he said that when I talked to Dr. Morsi, they told me he's going to be president. Why are you so casual with him? But I was very practical, actually, and I told him what to do and what not to do and how to talk and how to address the public. So it is really important to be clear about uh, this. It is important uh, then in this case to assess your capacities as a person as a party uh, your finance etc uh, it is also important to assess how much i can pay or spend on the electoral campaign uh, so instead of uh, so i need to make that assessment heads heads on uh, uh, or upfront because from the beginning, uh, because if I start with a very big electoral campaign and then fall from paying for the rest of it, it's not going to look good. Okay, I didn't hear the question, but he said that they branded the Kelly de Charolo as a landy. Turkey, uh, and he is being marketed in the and in, even in international media as someone from the people who is modest. He's talking from the kitchen. He's so he's, you know, changing the perception. Yeah. That's how he's using this. Is uh, older. So you can't speak about that, for for example. Of course. 
the sound is back now. So uh, we hear that Erdogan pushed to have Kalisar Oglo his uh, opponents. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, for example, one of one of the mistakes of uh, AK Party was that uh, they lost Istanbul, so they didn't understand and they didn't read. Uh, they didn't read the trends of the voters when they uh, uh, no nominated uh, Ali Yild bin Yildirim, uh, who was. Uh, 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 to face or to compete Turkish young ladies and uh, a young man. So they lost Istanbul for him or they lost uh, uh, Istanbul to him. So you need to read the trends of the people, understand them and give them somebody uh, uh, who are attra uh, attractive to the uh, voters. So uh, list, uh, studying the voters and the audience, you need to understand and study the demographics with all of its details. So when you have 6 million voters, you need to understand their trends, uh, the groups, uh, their income, uh, their residents. You need to understand the interests of the people. To put it simply, a combination. So you need to understand the strength and the, the, the trends of the people. And that's a problem. This group is suffering from that problem. So, uh, for example, last elections, they were talking about the taxi drivers. So. You look at each group and you try to address the pain points of that group. To understand or to study the influential people. So who influence each group of that? Uh, for example, there could be, for example, religious leaders uh, who supported the Erdogan or this movement or a, a certain faction in, in, in the of course, uh, to identify Abu Trika, Abu Trika is an icon uh, uh, in the Arab world. He is a football player and he is a very famous person in the Arab world uh, for the English audience to understand who is Abu Trika. So, uh, Dr. Morsi, the campaign against him was that he was uh, very uh, strict and uh, Khairat Shadar was the first one and when he was uh, excluded, uh, 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 Dr. Morsi became the first uh, one. Uh, or actually, uh, he was called the spear, actually, in order to uh, undermine uh, Dr. Morsi. So we agreed with Dr. Uh, with Abu Trika that he is going to uh, make a two minute video uh, to, to say that he studied the uh, candidates and uh, to see. Uh, and that he supports Dr. Mercy as a uh, presidential candidate. And of course, he didn't receive money for that. Uh, so we took this video. Uh, Mahmoud Saad was one of the most uh, uh, popularist uh, or popular uh, program. And it's very important when you select a program to use and to understand who are the people who watch that program. So for example, uh, Mahmoud Saad or the people who watch the program of Mahmoud Saad, they don't, don't have depth in in uh in their ideas uh, and that's like uh, yusri fuda yusri fuda the people who look at, uh, or watch his program they are the elites they are the the, the cultivated people so we said that, uh, to mahmoud said that we are going to uh, give you a video for abu trika so people will be influenced by abu trika it's uh, a match for abu trika and uh, abu trika was on uh, despair he was on uh, uh not in the match and then when he got into the uh, the match he uh, scored two goals. So then we gave that uh, video and uh, and we gave, the, of course, uh, we said that Abu Trika is going to speak in that the channel and this will bring them viewership. Uh, after the break, I agreed with Dr. Morsi. And of course, uh, he was very busy and he doesn't watch uh, football matches. And I told him today ha this happened and I want you to comment on that. And uh, he listened to that and he said, uh, I would like to congratulate Abu Trika for the uh, two goals that he scored. And by the way, he was a spare and he was uh, outside the match. Then he got into the match and scored two goals. So we used that. Actually, we burned the uh, the term that was used against uh, uh, against uh, Morsi, and we said that this spare player, when he gets into the match, he's going to score goals. And uh, it was in favor of uh, of Shinnet Channel. So those two groups, what? Do they use? Do they use TikTok, Facebook, uh, uh, through uh, masks? Do they read uh, newspapers in looking for the information? How do they build their knowledge or their information? 
So I, I study my uh, a group, my audience, uh, their uh, ambitions and their aspirations. What are the pain points? Who are the influencers and the communication channels in order to access those people or reach those people? The next level uh, or the next phase is uh, devising the strategy. Here, of course, the, the strategy, I'm not going to talk about it very much for the sake of time. So in a strategy, it's very important to identify what do I want? We said in the beginning that Muharram Inja is not in the elections because he wants to win or Uzal, uh, Uzun is not going into the elections to win. So you need to identify what are you going to do? What are you going to achieve in the elections? Who is your audience and how you are going to reach them? So they able to talk about the communication and channels of your audience. What is the, the core messages that you are going to have? In each campaign, you need to have a core message. And afterwards, you have uh, uh, branch messages or sub messages. For example, the core message for uh, President Erdogan that I am the old man who won and I'm going to win in the future. This is the, the general message, the overarching uh, message uh, upon which he's building the strategy. But then you have messages uh, for each group. For example, the uh, the group that uh, were affected by the terrorist uh, uh, acts by PKK, those uh, uh, messages for the civil servants, uh, messages to other groups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I built the program and uh, uh, put those messages in that. I, uh, so as I told you, for example, Khalid Daroglu is being branded as Gandhi of Turkey, and they are trying to uh, 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 aggrandize uh, him. So, for example, they are uh, saying uh, they, they are supporting him with Kemal, uh, Kemal Imamoglu, with uh, uh, Akshinar, with others in a way that they are going to aggrandize him. Uh, so, they are saying that he's not a single man, he's not an individual. There is a group that is going to rule. And that is the main message of their campaign. And if, uh, if you, if you uh, watch two days ago, they did something that is nice. And I believe maybe the uh, elections campaign of Kalich uh, Tarogl, they have indicators uh, that the nationalists who are, uh, uh, who are uh, affiliated to the E party, they're not all of them going to vote for Kalich Tarogl because of their, uh, uh, positions toward the PKK and because of the attack or the assault that uh, was made by Miral Actionar on, on them. Two days ago, they did something very nice. They uh, they showed images of Kemal Kalich Daroglu with his wife going to the uh, going to visit uh, Miral Actionar and her husband uh, in in their house. Uh, of course, so this is a message, electoral message, because. And nine uh, days before the elections, they are not uh, free. They're not available to go and have a family visit to uh, them. So the main goal of the campaign, they want to deliver a message that we are uh, uh, working hand in hand and we are on agreement and for God's sake, just vote for us, <laughs> please. Here we are, we are having dinner. And not only that, actually. Uh, he's going to her house and it is a family visit. So the mess, it is an indirect message. Of course, he didn't, uh, make a statement that we are going to have dinner together. No, that it was um, a family visit. We are spending some time and we're not talking about politics. And I believe that maybe they only spent five minutes to take photos and that's it. And they wouldn't have dinner even. So. Uh, for the program, the, uh, the electoral program, there are questions that should be uh, asked. Uh, as we see, for example, everybody were a series. He was uh, focusing on the national aspect and the moral aspect. So there were projects uh, that uh, they are. Uh, he is inaugurating, for example, the talk car, the uh, uh, the, the, the water play carrier, uh, and other programs in order to support the main idea that he built, which is. I am a man of achievements, of fulfillments, and I have hundreds of, of achievements that I have already made. Other people work in a different way. So they, uh, they are, or the other group, they are bailed, uh, or ba basing their uh, idea that they are a group. So Kamala uh, uh, Ogro in a, in a stay, in a place, uh, whereas Miral Akshinar is in a different place and uh, Akram Yamamoglu in a different place. So they are showing that they are everything. Of course, you have to put the agenda and the uh, budget and uh, the uh, time frame of your uh, budget uh, or, or of your campaign. Now, how do you manage the electoral campaign? I mean, uh, what is the plan uh, or, or the time plan? 
uh, in Egypt, uh, there was uh, an, uh, a candidate, uh, he was uh, very strong and we were afraid that he's going to win. Uh, his campaign, uh, they were uh, they were run by two of his friends and uh, uh, they, uh, of course, we have uh, some, uh, we talk with each other and I'm sure that one of them is watching us now and I'm not going to uh, mention his name because I'm going to meet with him tomorrow. So, so they made a very uh, grave mistake. They, are, they did two mistakes, actually. The first mistake was that in you, when you are running or managing the uh, campaign, you re should reach the peak at the, nine, at the eve of elections. So you have to uh, be like a crescendo and you are uh, going up or ascending, ascending till you reach the peak, the eve of the elections. Afterwards, you start going down. Uh, in uh, Abu al-Futuh campaign, they reached the peak two weeks before the elections. Of course, they started uh, very early and they started uh, uh, one year ago and they reached the peak two weeks before the elections and that was it. And I have evidence that the same uh, 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 the same problem was made by Kelich.org. What does it mean? Uh, the curve, uh, which means the two curves the time as uh, Erdogan's candidate, that's because of the machine that is behind them. You need to have a machine. You need to have uh, uh, where, uh, the, the, the machine behind you. Those who were supporting uh, Abu al-Futuh, they were amateurs. So uh, Mohammed Shafiq didn't have this machine, but uh, Morsi, okay, because they have the, he has the uh, Muslim state behind him. That's why today, for example, Erdogan, why Erdogan is uh, uh, winning and he is able to rally people because he has a machine, he has uh, people, he has leaders uh, who are able to do that. Uh, it is very uh, different from uh, those for uh, uh, for someone who is taking a leave uh, to go to vote for 10 minutes, whereas the other people who are taking a leave for two weeks and they are dedicating themselves for the election. So when you have a machine behind you, it will help you. Uh, it is very important to hear as a strategy of the success uh, uh, involvement or engagement with the voters. It is very important for the voters to see you amongst uh, them effective uh, messages that uh, address the problems, uh, simple language, uh, clear, uh, 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 credible and uh, transparent. And uh, there is a very important question that is asked in marketing. It says, uh, what's in it for me? So for example, if I go to for Kamal what's in it for me? So the campaign, uh, your campaign should answer this question for me. What's in it for me? This is very important. So what am I going to uh, a benefit if I'm going to vote for you. There is the use of the influencers and uh, opinion leaders. It is very important in the strategy. And we have also uh, another point that is important, funding and the central administration or uh, central management. This is very dangerous. Why? Especially when we're talking about a, a big country like Turkey or other countries, uh, it's not sufficient or it's not uh, uh, useful not to have a central management because if I don't do that, I will have contradicting uh, messages. When we were running the uh, or managing the elections of the People's Assembly in 2011 and 2012, we said that there was a problem or we found the problem. What was the problem? We see someone, for example, a candidate in uh, Upper Egypt, uh, 1,000 kilometers away from Cairo, and they, for example, they uh, film him that if you love God, uh, vote for us in order to apply Sharia. So this message will be used against your main message. And you will find that you are losing. Of course, your uh, uh, your enemy or your, advisor, uh, uh, your adversaries are going to use that. They will say that they are calling you or labeling you as Kafir. They want to apply the uh, Sharia, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, for example, uh, in the elections, uh, Sheikh al Hawaini said that now we have the battle of or Ghazwa, as it is said in Islam, the Ghazwa of the ballot boxes. And of course, that was its backlash uh, on, on, uh, against the, uh, uh, the group to have a brand and the main message and not to and, and, and central uh, uh, management in order not to have contradicting messages. Don't you see, uh, Dr. Sami wanted me to speak in English, but I said, why? Uh, I will speak in Arabic, that would be better, I will use this uh, slang uh, language. 
And by the way, on Al Jazeera, they used to complain from me. We had okay, so he didn't continue the story. Now, another aspect for the strategies on the, the, the success uh, uh, recruiting volunteers. Uh, a lot of campaigns do not know how to use volunteers, how to make use of the volunteers. In any campaign, they are a very important factor. If you don't know how to use the volunteers and recruit them, mobilize them and use them sufficiently because you can't have the volunteers uh, uh, with you for 24 hours. For example, I might tell you, I, am, I, will, be, I will volunteer uh, with you or, or in your campaign. that but without having any task seems uh, uh, if that happens if i am for if i see that i am a vip person and i uh, i can strategize i will be disappointed and i might say okay i will go to the other part you know, employed and i will say that those are failing people and uh, they, they don't know how to work. follow up and the uh, gauging the performance and the quick uh, reactions this is very important this should be an integral part of the strategy and to know how to do it this is spent here it, it's not the best use of it because uh, um, So I'm going to talk with Sam, Dr. Sam and explain to him and he will tell, no, I want to see a program, etc. Whereas my grandmother, I will tell her, I will take the person, uh, I love him, he is a relative or he is a person, uh, a man of God or a man of religion i'm going i want you to pass your vote there and that's it so it will be easy for me this is a vote and that is a vote when we are counting votes and this is different as i told you this might uh, make a, a difference of 10 percent of the event uh, or 47.5 or 52.5 uh, percent uh, of course we have uh, mobilization through the uh, uh, phone and this should be personalized i don't send for example uh, don't forget to vote uh, the best uh, candidate murad ali for example who is murad ali it's not going to work but i make phone calls or i send tailored messages or sms's and uh, if or the influence so i need to have five six calls at the end of the week whether they are calls or messages but five times and uh, in the last week of the elections they will be directed to me and it should be with something that is tailored for me so when we are talking about uh, the uh, a group of the young people now I, a lot of people tell me that i am a young person alhamdulillah thank god so if i uh, somebody i need to receive a message that is tailored for somebody who is young like me if it is uh, for women for example the messages must be tailored for uh, the men now the campaigns of uh, door to door campaign it is very important and uh, it shows the, the studies show that if we have door to door uh, networks uh, they are more influential than comes uh, the phone calls than the sms's okay here i want to add something in terms of the campaigns of uh, the door-to-door -door, uh, campaigns here it is very important to train people and we have seen that and we have seen that in in turkey we have volunteers uh, 
we see the development to you. So they are, for example, just distributing something. Go to vote for Erdogan. And that's it. It doesn't mean anything, right? It's not door to door campaign. This is this is just, uh, you know, passing by the doors. So you need to train people. We uh, wanted the elections that were uh, uh, were supposed to be in April 2013. I was responsible for those, uh, but they were uh, uh, deleted. We had a program to train 15,000 volunteers for the uh, justice and freedom and how they send messages and we have conducted the uh, pro we started to uh, start the program and how we are going to conduct it at the level of the uh, the, the republic and at the level of egypt and how they are going to do each one is going to meet with 50 or 60 people so uh, within two months uh, the result will be uh, we are going to reach all people but of course with qualified people and uh, certain uh, messages. Of course, you know the times of the uh, media, but it's very important uh, to know the uh, 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 the most important advertisements are the ones that are acquired. Uh, some people uh, make uh, uh, advertisements on TV and uh, on the radio. The least thing that brings you votes are the advertisements. Why? I will give you an example. Now, if I, uh, if you are a candidate and I tell you that, uh, for example, I uh, made an advertisement with the uh, company, uh, consultancy company of uh, Morad, and it makes a lot of uh, uh, advertisements. So that's fine, you are going to look at it. But if you find uh, someone who wrote an article in a newspaper and he said, for example, I met with Murad and he's this person is so and so. Or for example, Dr. Sami, when he is in a uh, TV interview and he talks about me, who are you going to uh, believe more? This is the one they acquired. So they uh, promoted or they owned, they are the least influential. Okay. So I, I'm not, I should not talk about myself. Because about the acquired one, I will have more credibility. Then we have uh, a topic, and of course, it takes uh, time. Uh, uh, it is a lecture by itself, which is managing uh, media crisis. Uh, you can invite me once uh, and another time to talk about that. But this is a, a, a danger, and it's very important how to kill a media crisis. A, on time and how can you uh, deal with it immediately and you can sense it before it happens or at the time of happening uh, in the campaign of dr mercy there were several crises uh, one of them was uh, about the cars that uh, one of the cars in the convoy of dr mercy they uh, uh, st uh, stepped over a, 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 a boy in the al uh, uh villages and the, the, the boy was killed uh, another uh, campaign was that dr mercy takes, uh, takes uh, medicine against seizures and uh, that uh, they affect his uh, conscious uh, consciousness so you need to know how to deal with these uh, crises I uh, didn't want, I, I wanted to make it to leave the uh, Turkish elections till the end, but I talked about them uh, throughout the presentation. But I will uh, talk about them for five minutes and that. Now, because you are living in Turkey and a lot of people in the world are uh, looking at the elections in Turkey, the most important aspect of the elections in Turkey is the change in the, uh, uh, the rules of the game. What do I mean? I was talking with one of the uh, great thinkers here, and he said one of the rules of the game that changed was that the, uh, we have less ideology and we have more about achievement. Uh, how is that? Kemal Kalecidaroglu and his team, on purpose, they attracted uh, three people who are conservatives, Ali Babajana and his party, uh, as Saada party, and Ahmad Awdoglu and his party regardless of uh, their uh, political weight and the weight of their votes but their message is very important which is they uh, have removed the stigma that uh, the uh, the jhp has that uh, they are the people who uh, fought the hijab and they were against religion etc therefore here uh, so you are not uh, the voting is not going to be on a pure ideological background uh, uh, the kurds for example indirectly are supporting them the conservatives are there 
the nationalists and the secular people uh, and the leftists. On the other, uh, the other side, Erdogan did the same. So he has the uh, HDP or the HDP. He has the nationalists, and uh, his uh, political party has a mixture of, of uh, affiliations in, uh, already. So now. Uh, the I, so that's why we have less ideology and uh, the campaign is about uh, more about uh, uh, achievements. However, we have the polarization and the polarization is present in the society, especially in the uh, people, for example, in Anatolia, they are going to vote for Erdogan regardless of anything. And we have areas, for example, in Izmir or others, they are going to vote for the JHP regardless of uh, anything. So we are fighting for, uh, uh, we have 70 to 80 percent uh, are already determined and we are talking here about 20 to 25 percent of the votes that we are uh, struggling to get. Uh, the uh, economic crisis and because uh, some of the conservatives uh, in the uh, or joining the uh, the six member uh, table, uh, they have brought some votes and who are going for conservatives and they are going to vote for Kalishnarov. So how this uh, improvement happened? The, the the alliance of the opposition uh, uh, succeeded in one thing that they said that we are one hand, we are an alliance, and that they overcame uh, the um, uh, uh, the accusation uh, that made by Abba Erdogan that uh, they those people are unable to reach any common grounds or to agree in anything. It showed that no, we agreed on something. And at the end of the day, uh, Kemal Kalishdar Oglo, when he is visiting uh, Miral Akshanar and having dinner with her husband at home, and Ali Babajan is uh, with him in the uh, kitchen, and Ahmed Dawood Oglo, the image of Ahmed Dawood Oglo, who is uh, appraising uh, Kemal Kalishdar Oglo at a Saada party, is uh, posting the pictures of Kemal Kalishdar Oglo on the centers of their party. So they succeeded in doing this. Uh, in addition to that, they managed also in coordination and distributing uh, tasks uh, or the division of labor amongst uh, each of them. I was expecting to see, as uh, people say, uh, to have, for example, lone walls and mistakes, but I didn't see uh, uh, a lot of mistakes. So, for example, you will find somebody from the uh, JHP will say something uh, uh, or somebody else will say something that will be missing, but I thought that uh, uh, we will see more mistakes, but it seems that they are having very good control over the, uh, 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 the campaign. The two main points, what are the two main points for the uh, uh, citizens now? Uh, the economy, and uh, when uh, the Kalejdar Oglo talked about onion, it was a very strong point. Erdogan managed to uh, to change the direction in his campaign. And this is one of the successes of his campaign because he took the audience to the achievements of the defense industries, uh, talking about the Bayraktar drones, uh, talking about the, uh, uh, the, the tanks uh, uh, and agreements with Qatar, uh, the TOG uh, electric car, the Technofest uh, uh, exhibition, exhibition, and uh, giving the, uh, uh, the Atatürk uh, airport to an American company to make it a national park. So they have talked about, the, the, they, they drew attention to their areas. They, why wants people to talk about his achievements. So they draw attention to their uh, play playground, to their field, to the uh, strength points of, uh, of Erdogan. And as you see, people started to uh, speak less and less about uh, the economy, although we were expecting that this will be uh, the core uh, aspect of the campaign, but he didn't make it the main point of the campaign. This is very important in the campaign. Of Erdogan. When Erdogan, we will finish within five minutes. Okay, so uh, as we said, the elections improved in such a way. Now, talking about the rallies, some of the videos that I have, uh, if you uh, watch or if you follow me uh, on Twitter, you will find that every day I uh, have a video for three minutes. I talk about the 
the elections. Uh, the rallies uh, have nothing to do or they don't give any message about the, the, the votes that they will get. It is it shows the uh, uh, the ability to, to rally people or to, man to organize people. Uh, the last uh, 10 polls or the last five uh, polls uh, said that the elections will be uh, determined in the first round uh, uh, four to Kalisar Ovo and one for Erdogan. Seven uh, uh, polls said that there will be a second round of, uh, 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 of voting. Uh, five of those seven said that the uh, elections for Erdogan in the first round will be higher than the uh, uh, proportion that Kalisar uh, Ovo to be very honest, I do not uh, uh, believe any of those votes. Just to, to, to be very, very honest and very plain. Uh, we have, for example, in 2018, in the last three weeks, there were 18 uh, polls. Only seven. Uh, expected that everyone is going to win and 11-1 said that there will be a second round. Uh, one of them, and that was on the 23rd of June, uh, of June. it was one day before the elections and that was against the law because the law uh, says that uh, 10 days before the election day there should be no votes and one of them said that uh, everyone is going to get 44% and everyone got to 52.6% got to and that was in the uh, last elections in 2018. So, uh, so yeah, there was 8% uh, uh, difference, uh, and that poll was made on the eve of the election. Uh, there are different factors, uh, for example, the lack of uh, professionality, there could be some, uh, 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 some affiliation that will affect that, etc. So in 2020, we found in uh, one of the uh, of the polls that he got uh, 24 states out or, or uh, provinces out of 81 uh, provinces. So the polls are not accurate, and there is a uh, error margin. Of course, so the error margin can be three percent or four percent. Uh, so. If the error margin is 2%, it means that those who are doing the polls are very professional. Yesterday, Abdul Qadir Selfie uh, wrote an article and he said that he uh, looked at the polls and he said that polls. Uh, are not very credible. And he said that uh, Erdogan is going to win from the first round uh, with uh, 52%. Now, what is my what are my expectations? Today on Twitter, I have shared. Uh, I made a video and I shared my uh, own expectations. Uh, I said that uh, sixty two percent to seventy percent, there will be a second round of the budget. And this is my uh, and twenty to thirty percent. Erdogan is going to win uh, from the first round. Less than ten percent that Kilishdar Olu is going to win uh, from the first round. Uh, the reality says that both of them are uh, advancing. Uh, Erdogan is advancing in a higher space uh, based on the decisions that he's making, uh, such as uh, the increase of the salaries, uh, the pension uh, decision, uh, adding 45,000 uh, teachers. Uh, all of those uh, points are for them. How is Kilimanjaro of Love advancing? They are uh, doing. Uh, they are melting. The voting uh, weight of Muharram Inja. I believe that uh, Muharram Inja uh, was uh, seven percent. Now he has two or three percent only of voters. Uh, yesterday there were videos that were shared on mobile phones and on social media. They were uh, very abusive or very uh, uh, offensive to Muharram Inja. And, uh, and and yesterday he made a statement when those videos were shared on uh, the mobile phones. Videos and photos. Uh, there are some uh, uh, some scandalous uh, photos, uh, sexual in, in sexual positions. We don't know whether they are correct or not. Uh, of course, the JHV has a history. 
الجيش السابق بتاعه اللي كان عامل نفس الكلام. And uh, with with their uh, former president. So uh, the second round, nobody knows what happens. If anybody says that if we go to a second round, uh, those two weeks will be a completely different world. Uh, the, uh, of course, we have uh, experience in in in, in of the second rounds. In Turkey, they don't have any experience. It just never happened to them. For some of the Arab world, so we have uh, a huge experience in the second round. Here in Turkey, they didn't know that before, uh, so they don't have experience. Even if they have uh, two, uh, the, the second round, of course, it is uh, a, a re-voting for two uh, uh, for two candidates. And even the people, the, the Turkish people, don't have this culture to know uh, to whom they are going to vote for. By book, uh, the uh, the the second round should have a different campaign uh, from the first round. This is the uh, the normal thing, and uh, the, vo- uh, the the focus on them is about the uh, lost uh, the votes that they lost to others, and the language should be more reconciliation uh, reco- reconcil- uh, reconciliating than uh, adversary. So these are some of the points that should be. Uh, taken into consideration. If anybody wants to if you want to communicate with me, here is my number and uh, I hope that I didn't take much of your time. Uh, uh, now, if you have any questions or remarks, uh, the floor is yours to ask you the questions. Thank you indeed, Dr. Muraj, for uh, this uh, interesting uh, 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 presentation with a lot of details. Uh, which opens uh, uh, which opens our minds and our eyes on a lot of details of uh, elections. I wanted to see such a presentation and thank God you covered all of the points that we need uh, very thoroughly. Uh, not only through knowledge but uh, or, or theoretical knowledge but also Uh, through your uh, experience. We have less than 15 minutes, so if we have any questions or any comments, I have a lot, but I'm going to keep silent and uh, give the opportunity to the attendees uh, here. And uh, uh, if there are questions, uh, I, I will have just uh, one final remark. Uh, and if anybody has questions, please, you can ask me a question now, and uh, Dr. Murad is going to answer. Raise your hand if you have any questions. تفضل سيدي لو تعرف شكرا يعطيك العافيه وحقيقه استفدنا كثير ما كنا نعرف شيء. ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ماي سيلف اي دينت نو اني ثينك اباوت الكشنز اند اباوت ذا كامبين اند اول اوف ذيز ايشوز ان توك ان تيرمز اوف رالي يو سيد ذات ات از نوت امبورتنت ات اول ان اس ان يور فور اكزامبل اي فاوند ذات ان ذا ميونسيباليتي الكشنز ذا بليس وير بيبل Uh, who are rallying or where the people are being rallied is very important. So, for example, Ben Ali didn't have anybody on his table, whereas Akram Imam Moglu had a lot of people on his uh, uh, table. So that that's, uh, is my uh, that is my remark only. Thank you. Thank you uh, for this lecture. Uh, it is clear. Uh, your experience is very clear in your presentation. My question is, expecting that we have a high percentage of going to a second round, uh, the uh, fluctuating votes will be those who are giving their votes for the third and the fourth uh, uh, candidates, uh, Sinan Ogan and Muharram Jamida. We know that uh, both candidates have different uh, positions from the two main. So those votes, Uh, to whom do they go usually? Uh, so, in order to expect in the second round, uh, are we going to have less voters in the second round or uh, what? Uh, the sound is not very clear from the room. The speaker needs to use a microphone. The microphone is not working from the speaker. 
So in general, what he's saying is that maybe there are voters that are upset with our parties, so they either are not going to give their votes to uh, Erdogan because they are upset with them, or they're going to boycott the, uh, vo uh, the votes because uh, of him. I want to ask about the votes uh, from uh, people living abroad. How critical are they? And uh, you said that, uh, or you focused that uh, they uh, focused on the image of Khalid Jaroglu as the Gandhi of Turkey. Does that, uh, uh, or, or do the Turks subscribe to the image? Because uh, it seems that the Turks are uh, more in, inclined with having the image of the leader. Uh, so does do you think that this image is in favor of Khalid Jaroglu or not? Uh, the table of uh, the, the alliance table of the opposition, uh, there was uh, some uh, leakage from them because of the contradicting ideology that are sitting at the same table. And it shows that each one uh, who is uh, from a certain party, uh, they are not free to. Uh, talk freely about their ideology uh, because they don't want to lose the other members of those alliance who are from a different ideology. So do you think that this uh, six-member table, uh, politically speaking, uh, uh, apart from the, uh, the elections, do you think that this uh, political alliance can be uh, a problem? Or is it going to cause a, uh, an electoral problem because of the contradiction uh, in the, uh, uh, between the different ideologies or not. You said that, that so the curve of uh, the electoral campaign should be on uh, reach the peak on the eve of the elections. Uh, you said that the curve of uh, the six-member table is uh, falling now. And when it falls, it doesn't rise again, I believe. So do you think that now, as the Erdogan's curve is uh, rising, don't you think that this... Uh, uh, gives more uh, 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 chances for Erdogan. I believe, I, if I understood you well, you said something uh, different to that. So what causes the impact of uh, this in the campaign? Now, uh, in the last 10 days, maybe, we started to see that there is a steady uh, rise in the curve of Erdogan. So what is your comment on that? And I believe that tomorrow there will be a leak against the opposition. Maybe it will be the uh, the final blow uh, against the opposition. I have a lot of questions, but I will be brief for the sake of time. You didn't talk a lot about the foreign uh, policy and foreign intervention. To what extent do you believe that this might have uh, uh, have any relation in elections in general and in the in Turkish election in specific? Uh, the other point is about the political system because Erdogan uh, left behind the parliamentarian uh, system and he got into a presidential system. So do you think that this has any impact or any influence to, uh, to the voters? Uh, it is a presidential now. The opposition wants to bring the system back to a parliamentary, uh, uh, parliamentary system. Uh, so do you believe that this has any relation, 1%, 0.5% uh, or doesn't have any uh, impact? Uh, uh, and we talked a lot about the uh, presidential elections, but uh, we didn't talk about the, uh, the list of votes uh, uh, for the parliament. So maybe they are going to vote for a certain party and uh, they are going to vote for uh, a president from the different uh, party. And this happens in America, for example, they will vote for the Republican Party, and uh, then the president, they will vote for the uh, Democratic president. We don't have a, vo a sound from the room, please. The microphone is closed. I'm sorry, you can't hear the speaker. There's no voice, no. The ACT Party, yeah, it's working now. It's working. This one is it better? It's working. Yeah. Okay. 
قواعد حزب العداله والتنميه شعروا بتهديد دين كبار جدا. The grassroots of the AK party started to feel a very great threat. Uh, and they start to have a concern. What if the, uh, the JHB is back and the people will be uh, prosecuted again? So those people are defending their rights uh, and their freedoms. The other point, the early uh, celebration because of the polls, it became another threat that we, that we are uh, getting into the elections and we need to get uh, uh, to go to the street and go to the vote. So there was a lot of enthusiasm and uh, the uh, uh, solid background that uh, Erdogan has is stronger than the one that uh, the opposite him has. And uh, here I'm talking about the ideological uh, solid background uh, and those who are convicted uh, to uh, or pursued to vote for them. And as I said, for example, in the municipality uh, elections, uh, people went to, they said that we, uh, uh, they, they punished, uh, 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 or, or sorry, for people who are going to go to the school next to them, for example, and uh, vote for Kalishdar Oglo to punish uh, Erdogan. Uh, and uh, it will cost nothing but some, for someone to go for a rally with uh, uh, in close the streets and to stay there for 10 hours. Of course, it requires ideology for people to do it. Uh, if they, we have a second round, uh, uh, what will be the reaction of the society? And who's going to win the uh, parliamentary, uh, parliamentarian election? Uh, Muharram Inja and Sena, how much are they going to pay? You have three, four percent or more? Uh, our uh, experience in Egypt, for example, the uh, second round, we had more percentage of voters than the, the first uh, round. So sometimes the uh, polarization and the fear uh, make people go uh, uh, um, more uh, uh, to the election. So we can't expect that because it will be a very new experience. Uh, two days ago, there was 2.8%. Uh, the last elections, we were talking about uh, nine, uh, 900,000 voters in the uh, uh, outside uh, Turkey. And now maybe the number is 2.8 per million. Uh, I believe now the votes uh, for everyone will be more uh, because uh, the number of the um, uh, uh, natural, naturalized uh, fear people uh, is more, especially in the Arab world. And people who are outside Turkey, they don't have a problem with the economy. And maybe uh, uh, on the contrary, they are uh, happy, for example, because they are living in Saudi Arabia and they are, uh, they, uh, their income is in Saudi Arabia. And so they don't feel the economy in, uh, uh, in, in, in uh, Turkey. And uh, the, the Turks, for example, uh, in a specific, they have a very uh, strong national uh, sense, uh, and Erdogan is playing on this uh, issue, and he's winning on uh, this background. Uh, sociologists should uh, study the movements of uh, the society. We have six million new voters. Are those six millions who are between 18 and 23 years old, do they think in the same old uh, way, how much are they affected by TikTok? Okay. And I'm talking about TikTok, not about Instagram. How much are they influenced by TikTok? Now, if we look, uh, now if we look at the group, uh, uh, the group age between 23 and 30. So our uh, typical, uh, our our stereotype about the Turkish uh, citizens is it the same or is it changed? I can't tell you whether it is the same or not. <laughs> so uh, now, whether uh, Gandhi will uh, uh, or people will subscribe to the image of Gandhi or not, I don't know. Uh, and by the way, the, the, the campaign of uh, Kemal Kalishdar Oglu is an American uh, campaign. And I believe the one who is managing uh, his uh, Kalishdar Oglu is uh, maybe the, the manager of Obama's uh, manager. For example, uh, being casual, wearing uh, uh, or uh, rolling the, the sleeves and uh, uh, being this uh, simple. And from my experience, I think it is uh, as it is said. So there is a challenge about the background or, or uh, the, the grassroots of the people. Uh, people imagine, uh, remember when I told you or when I spoke about the five factors that impact uh, or uh, impact about my selection of the, 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 uh, the candidates, this is an, an, an immediate decision. 
I, for example, I believe in uh, nationalism and I love Miral Akshana, but I have interests and I'm coming out of an earthquake and I know that this person, uh, uh, I don't believe that this person will uh, build my house. What does that mean? This is a decision. This is my decision. Different from the decision of Sami, different from Shaima, different from. So it is an individual decision. So this mixture, that's why we see a lot of surprises. Now, the, uh, to answer about the question of the rise in the curve, I agree with you. That's why we say 24 hours. Uh, in my video today, I said on purpose, today is uh, the 10th of May. On uh, In the afternoon, I'm saying these expectations. So why I am saying that? Because tomorrow, I, will may, uh, I may say, uh, uh, different to expectations. So that's why I say today, at this hour, I'm expecting this. We still have four hours and 24 hours. And the Turkish politics is very uh, long time because we can anything can happen. So we can't uh, judge for, for sure. Does it uh, affect, for example, what happened with Bill Clinton when, uh, uh, when the FBI said that we are going to uh, investigate Hillary Clinton uh, immediately. Five five percent of the voters. Uh, she she lost five percent of the voters. Although after one week, uh, the uh, the result was uh, uh, negative. So the uh, your uh, question about the external or the foreign uh, influence. I'm, again, I'm going to back the five uh, factors that affect uh, the uh, their influence on the people. Uh, of course, they will have an influence, but the. Uh, there is a group of people and we can't uh, calculate that. Some people, uh, uh, this group of people in Turkey uh, think in, in terms of interest. Uh, so uh, they uh, believe in uh, uh, or in the five past years, they have been uh, taught that our problem is uh, the Syrians destroyed our country because we sided with Morsi, we lost a lot of uh, opportunities. So there is a group of people who think in interests. That's why, why I'm saying in the elections, we are talking about two different schools. Erdogan is talking about nationalistic issues. He is saying this is the uh, century of Turkey, uh, uh, defense uh, uh, industries, uh, nuclear uh, reaction, etc., etc. In addition to a moral uh, aspect, which is we are against homosexuality, etc., etc. The others, they're talking about interest. They're saying, I'm talking about, the, we're talking about the bread. We're talking about uh, the price of the union. How we are going to do the, uh, to lower the price of the only we're going to say uh, we will we will go to the west we will say we will serve you and do whatever you want give us 300 million uh, dollars to, to to lower the prices so that's why the recent movements that Erdogan made were very smart. So, for example, raising uh, the uh, minimal wage uh, of the civil servants, uh, the uh, solving the problem of 45,000 uh, employees in the pension, uh, the uh, promises for the houses that were affected by the earthquake, the students, all of these issues attract certain groups. In terms of the parliamentary and uh, the uh, presidential system, I don't see that it is having a lot of a problem. Erdogan is not talking about uh, about it. today. For example, he tweeted and he said we are going to uh, reform or, or amend the constitution to continue the democratization in the country. I don't know. I can't say this is uh, uh, correct or wrong. I believe that this tweet today it means that uh, they ha they have uh, from the indicators. Uh, that this issue is going to get us uh, five, uh, 300 thousand uh, votes so this uh, vote uh, this tweet is coming out of the blue <laughs> we can't hear the Sami, unfortunately he needs to use the microphone exactly Finally, uh, talking about the uh, parliamentary and the presidential elections, or the uh, all of this fuss is about the pre uh, presidential elections. Why? Because this was, uh, is uh, this is what is going to uh, uh, influence the uh, the future of Turkey. Because uh, with the mosaic that we have, any uh, president that will come, he is going to attract the uh, parliamentary uh, elections through uh, 
uh, uh, through alliances. So to to to, to put it very plainly, uh, let's uh, let's uh, say that the uh, the six member. The six-member table uh, won the parliament, and Erdogan was uh, the president. He is not going to be. Uh, uh, he will be able to to dismantle this uh, alliance. And the same uh, applies if Kalistar Oglu uh, won the uh, presidential elections, and the other alliance of uh, AK Party won the parliament. They will be able to dismantle that. So attracting different uh, uh, parliamentary members, uh, parliament uh, members, will uh, is not that difficult. So. The focus on the presidential elections uh, because uh, uh, the parliament elections uh, has to do with different regions. My main impression is that the, the choices of the AK party and uh, uh, having strong or uh, pushing uh, some uh, uh, members who are strong members like Suleiman Soilo or uh, Akar and some ministers, maybe this will help them and give them more uh, weight. Uh, we can't judge uh, about that because our focus now is on the uh, uh, presidential elections. As Dr. Sami said, the voter says, for example, I voted for Erdogan, but the list that I have, uh, who in my uh, voting uh, electoral district, for example, convinced me whether I was convinced with this person or that person, I'm going to compare the person, people in the list so I can't uh, judge uh, people in the parliamentary uh, elections. Uh, compared to the uh, presidential elections. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, uh, lecture. And I believe that even people who were unable to um, uh, to be with us uh, live, they are going to watch this video, which will be available on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for being here on our on the uh, the com campus of our university and online. Uh, hopefully, the next seminar will be on Sudan, and we are going to post on our website uh, when and who will be the lecturers. Thank you very much for being with us, and peace be upon you all. I'm not sure that the question is going to be